Hi everyone, welcome to the video tutorial series on the independent samples t-test, which is part of a larger video series uh, called Statistics for Non-Statisticians. My name is Chris Lamb and I'm a professor of technical communication uh, here to present statistical information in a way that's easy to understand uh, and, and simple to use and apply. Um, there's even a sample data set that'll go along with each video uh, that you can use as we talk about the different uh, parts of the independent sample t-test. Uh, so let's get started. I want to really quickly introduce uh, this method that I've come up with called the DEER method. Um, and it stands for Define, Example, Apply, and Report. And really the idea is um, for uh, us to walk through um, these four areas of the t-test. Um, and hopefully by doing that, it'll give uh, novices and beginners um, just enough context to really understand and apply uh, the t-test to their own uh, work, whatever that may be. Um, and so the idea of these videos is much less about theory, much less, less about the actual math itself, although we will talk about those things a little bit, um, and much more about applying um, t-tests to particular contexts. Okay, so with all that said, let's start with the D, define. Um, so let's define t-test really quickly. Um, there are three major types of t-tests. Um, the first is what's called an independent samples t-test, and that's the one we'll focus on today. Um, and the definition of that is it compares the mean, or the average, of two independent populations. And I think the best way to sort of understand uh, definitions is to, to walk through a quick example. So a quick example of an independent samples t-test might be, is there a mean difference in SAT scores between freshmen and sophomore students? Right, and so we're comparing the average score between two independent populations. And in our case, our independent populations are freshmen and sophomore students. Um, the other thing to note is when, when we're talking about t-tests, the, the dependent variable or the outcome variable, the variable in which we're testing um, between the two populations must be what's called a continuous variable. Um, and the easiest way to know if this is a continuous variable is if it's a number, right? So SAT scores are measured as a number. Um, we know that we've got a continuous dependent variable. Okay, so that's the first type of t-test. The second type of t-test is called the repeated measures t-test or the paired samples t-test. And this is when you've got one group of people, one population, and you're testing them more than once. You're testing them over time. Um, and so an example of that is if a group of people are given a medication for high cholesterol, does their average cholesterol levels decrease after one month? So we take, a we take their cholesterol level before we give them the medicine, we give them the same people the medicine, and then we test them again a month later. Um, and so that's an example of the paired samples t-test. And then finally, the one sample t-test. And this is used to compare a sample mean with a known population uh, or some other meaningful fixed value. And we really would use a one sample t-test only if we're looking at something that's highly studied, right? There's lots of data about it. So for example, does the class of 2015 uh, at a particular high school or college have higher or lower SAT scores than the SAT scores of all students across America, right? And so we're comparing one population with an already set number, a number that already exists, okay? So those are the three types of t-tests. Today we're going to focus uh, more specifically on the independent samples t-test. And so just as a visual representation, we're looking at comparing two means, right? Two averages for two populations. And so here's a visual representation of what that might look like um, if we're looking at a distribution of two populations. And so what we see here is at the peak is our average um, for this population in red. And the peak here is our average for this population in blue. And the independent samples t-test tells us is this gap between the two averages, between the two means, significant, right? So is this group, the one in red, actually significant, significantly greater than this group in blue? And so that's to just kind of give you a little bit of context what we're looking at. <coughs> so we've defined independent samples t-test. Let's take a look at, a, at an example. 
So an example of an independent samples t-test, here's a scenario. Suppose you are interested in discovering whether your male classmates use Facebook more or less than your female classmates in a week. Sorry about that. So that's our scenario. What I like to do is, um, in all of these videos, I will walk through a research question, a hypothesis, and a null hypothesis. Okay, So it's just going to be the same pattern, research question, hypothesis, null hypothesis. So our research question might be, do males use fe Facebook more or less than females? Right. So do males use Facebook more or less than females? Our hypothesis might be, or I'm sorry, our null hypothesis might be, um, there is no relationship between gender and Facebook usage. So our null hypothesis is males and females, the average uh, usage will be equal. Not literally equal, but not significantly different. So um, that's our null hypothesis. There's no relationship between gender and Facebook usage. Our framing this as a hypothesis, we might say there is a relationship between gender and Facebook usage. right? So there is a relationship, we just don't know if males use it more than females or if females use it more than males. So in this case, the shorthand would be the average of one population is just not equal to the average of the second population. Okay, um, So that would be one way to state the hypothesis. We would use what's called a two-tailed independent samples t-test in that case. If for some reason we had a reason to believe, a theoretical or logical reason to believe, hey, I think my male classmates use Facebook more than my female classmates, we might phrase our hypothesis like this. Male Facebook usage is significantly greater than female Facebook usage. And the shorthand might look like this, right? Population one is greater than population two. If that's the case, we would use a one-tailed independent samples t-test. Now, for the purposes of this particular scenario, um, I think we would probably want to use this hypothesis one with the two tail because there really is no theoretical or logical reason for us to just say one gender would use it more than another we're just interested in is there a difference okay so let's walk through a sample data set and so what I've done for you uh, in this video tutorial is I've provided for you a an actual uh, sample data set um, so you've randomly collected the number of hours of Facebook usage in one week for 100 males and 100 females. And you've collected these in a spreadsheet uh, with two columns, one for males and one for females. And you can see the link uh, in the link of the video, a sample data set. Um, I will post it. It's an Excel file, but I will post it on Google Docs so that anyone can access it. So let's take a look at that data set. And here's what that data set might look like. Uh, and what we're seeing here is, again, two columns. So just male Facebook usage in column A, female Facebook usage in column B, um, and for each participant, just the number of hours per week. Okay, So it's just 100 numbers for each. Okay, And so, again, you'll have access to that sample data set. The next thing we'll do, now that we have our scenario or example, um, is we will apply uh, and actually walk through the process of running a t-test. So apply, let's apply our independent samples t-test. Um, a couple things I want to, to cover. Um, one, we're just going to assume that our data meets all of the assumptions. Um, I will have a separate video on assumptions uh, and, and testing assumptions, but we're just going to assume that our data meets the assumptions. And the second thing we would need to do is uh, choose a software that can perform a t-test. Um, and so we can choose software that costs money. So that's, for example, SPSS, Excel, um, SAS, or Stata. Or we can choose a free option, uh, which is the internet. And that's the one that I prefer. So what I've got here, and I'll also post it in the link of the video, uh, in the description of the video, is a link to um, a, a really just a really easy to use t-test calculator that you can use on the internet and all you need is internet connection. Um, so let's go to that site right now and as you can see um, this is the interface that you'll see. Uh, for our example we want to enter or paste up to 2,000 rows because we've got 100 uh, 
100 samples of each uh, population. So we need, would need more than 50. Um, group 1 we're going to just call males, and group 2 we'll call females. And all you have to do then is to literally just go into your uh, spreadsheet, however you've collected your data or in the sample spreadsheet, um, and paste it into population 1, which is males, and population 2, which is females. So let's do that. Um, we're going to use an unpaired t-test, which is also another way to call an independent samples t-test. And all we have to do is click Calculate Now. And we get a uh, really easy to sort of uh, read output. And so what I want to do now is I just want to walk through this output. So to do that, um, let's go back here and let's interpret the results. So what are the steps to interpret the results? The first step is to examine the descriptive statistics. So these are statistics that are just describing our populations, thus descriptive. And these are typically the mean and standard deviation. You can take a look at another video that I've made on descriptive versus inferential statistics, um, and I will explain in more detail uh, what these are. Uh, but for now, we just want to look at the mean and standard deviation. So our mean for males is 16.15, our standard deviation is 8.16, females 12.51, and our standard deviation is 7.36. And what we'll do then is we will take a look at the means and standard deviations, and those are right there. Um, so the thing about these is, <laughs> you're probably wondering, well, clearly males use, uh, use Facebook more than females, right? Almost four hours more per week. Um, so why would we need to do a t-test if, if we can just see the averages? Well, the idea here is the t-test allows us to test and find out, is this difference actually significant. Um, and so to do that, the second thing we need to do is we need to examine the significance level, also known as the p-value. Okay, And significance level is a level that is set, preset. And the most typical, typically used um, value is 0.05, right? So a p-value of 0.05 is considered cons significant. And so to sort of put that in the lay terms, we can interpret p-value by saying, if we get a p-value of, of smaller than 0 0.05, less than 0 0.05, we can say there is less than a 5% chance that the difference between the two means, that the difference between males and females on Facebook usage is due to chance, right? So it's not just random that the males uh, if we get a significant result, it's not just random that the males used Facebook more than females, right? And so one of the big sort of factors that plays into significance um, is actually sample size, right? So if you imagine instead of 100 uh, participants uh, per group, we just looked at five, right? If we just looked at five males and five females, we probably have a harder time saying that th this difference is actually not due to chance. Right, it could just be random or due to chance that we picked five males that use a lot of Facebook and five females that don't use a lot of Facebook, and it's just sort of random. Uh, it's just sort of random that uh, the the um, the difference is there, and so sample size is a big factor in whether or not um, uh, significance can be obtained. Okay, so we want to then look at the p-value, and we're looking for less than 0 0.05. So less than 0 0.05 is good, higher than 0 0.05 is bad. So where we find that is right here, p-value and statistical significance, right at the top. So the two-tailed p-value equals 0 0.0011. So that's smaller than 0 0.05, so that's good. And then it gives you a little bit of interpretation here as well. By conventional criteria, this difference is considered to be very statistically significant. So that's great. Um, so we can safely say, hey, there is a significant difference between males and females on Facebook usage. 
Um, so let's go back to our current slide. Um, and so what we see here is a, most importantly, what's bolded is 0 0.0011. That's the number that we're looking for. We want anything smaller than 0 0.05. And the smaller, the better. So we've applied the, uh, the t-test to our sample data set. Now let's report, learn, learn about reporting this information. So you've done the test. How do you actually write this out? So reporting independent samples t-test has four steps. A short recap of the method, a descriptive recap with standard devi deviations, so uh, re recapping the descriptive statistics, a significance test with a t-statistic and p-value, and then the hypothesis test mm -hmm. recap. Okay. So here is a, an example of reporting this or writing this up. 200 randomly sampled students were asked how many hours a week they spend on Facebook, so that's our short recap of the method. An independent samples t-test revealed that males, uh, mean of 16.15, standard deviation of 8.16, uh, spent significantly more time than females, uh, mean of 12.51, standard deviation of 7.36, that's our descriptive recap, on Facebook per week. And then our significance test with our t statistic, t equals 3.3123 with the p-value of 0 0.0011. Okay, um, so that's steps one through three. And then we can also do step four by saying, therefore, the null hypothesis was rejected and hypothesis one was confirmed. Right, and just to, as a reminder, the null hypothesis is gender uh, and Facebook usage have no relationship. Well, this proves that they do have a relationship, and in fact, the relationship is that if you are a male, you will spend significantly more time than a female on Facebook usage. And again, just as a reminder, this is sample fake data. This isn't true. Um, I just made up the data. So finally, let's close out with what we know and what we don't know. So what does statistical significance actually tell us? Well, we know that males significantly spend more time on Facebook than females in this particular sample data set, but we don't know how significant this difference actually is, right? So we know it's significant in that we know there's a very small probability that the difference between the means are by chance, right? That's all we know. We, we know that there's less than a 5% chance, and in fact, in our, in our results, there's less than a 1% chance that the means are different due to just randomness. So that's good. We don't know how significant the difference actually is. So if we want to measure actually how large the difference is, so how significant is, um, how, how large is the significant finding, we have to use a measure called effect size. Um, and so I won't go into detail about effect size in this video, but you should see my video on measuring effect size um, because that's a really important sort of step that a lot of researchers and, and sort of novice um, folks who, who are learning about statistics uh, kind of skip over. Um, and so I encourage you to see my video on measuring effect size. That's all for now. We'll see you next time.